I warned you not to listen to that, Kits My Goat. Now look at you. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Ankle Cast. No, 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 no. It's not Ankle Cast. It's not? But we're not editing it. You said... Okay, well, maybe I was premature in that and other things. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, uh, let me me start over. Um, Hi, everybody. Welcome to... Uh, another episode of That Gets My Goat. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rich Outfield. And yes, I thought, so that we didn't have to wait a month for this to go up, that we would do this with no editing. Like you've been doing with your ankle cast, you just start it recording, Uh and you apologize if somebody cuts you off or you drop something, and you're like, okay, just a second. Um, And the ums and the, the sneezes and all that stuff you leave in, so that you can post them in a timely manner? Or wh- why is it that you don't edit them? Uh, mostly because then it would be a lot of work, <laughs> and I would never do it. And so the podcast wouldn't exist. Okay. Well, then l- let's say that it's the exact same reason here. We're not going to edit it. Although, it, boy, it's going to be hard for me to, 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 to just <laughs> fight the urge to edit. Fight the power. Because, I, you know, I've heard other people's podcasts that are just the I mean what would you call what you do on on Anklecast where or when somebody Boring just starts people? it and records and then when it's done they're done and if there's moments where they go off topic or they forget what they're going to say they go oh give me a second and then there's a second of him thinking and he's like ah I can't remember what it was sorry and on a on a Dude and Steve episode or a normal that gets my goat I would cut that out nobody would ever know that we well they would know because we started talking about something and then we talked <laughs> about something else. But they would know because there would be that weird cut in the middle of a of a word. You, you hear a breath halfway out, and then <laughs> yeah. All right, so yeah, that's what I don't know what you would call that. I don't know if there's a special name for it. Maybe as live. Ooh, I like that. That's what we call it in the news biz. Okay, so let's call this our as live that gets my go. All right, so this is as live. I mean, it's live for us, but you're not getting it live because. There's no antenna or anything hooked onto this mic. We're actually doing it on location from a park. Have we done that before? We walked around my neighborhood that one time. That's right. Okay, so it's similar to that, although I did edit that one. Yeah, and we sat in uh, your car that one time for... Uh, for Iron Man. Yeah, for Iron Man. Yeah. Um, this time around, we didn't see the movie together, though, so we couldn't just sit in the car and talk about it afterwards. We had to uh, meet later and talk about it. Because uh, you decided to go to the midnight showing. Yeah. And you decided to go without me, as I think you have vowed to do from now on. Yeah, pretty much. It seems to uh, really improve the experience. It makes I'm all not... the difference, apparently. <laughs> yeah, and apparently you and I saw totally different movies also. Oh, uh, did we? That's That'll be a fun... Com- or hopefully, it'll be fun for people to listen to. Because uh, oh, we're, we're going to be talking about Man of Steel. And uh, they came out just a couple of days ago. And hopefully we can get this thing up this week. So it's still the same week that the movie came out. And uh, Yeah, if we hurry, we can get it up before Thursday at 7 when all the Walmart <laughs> pre-show screenings happened. And you tried to go to one of those Walmart 7 o'clock. Well, right? I don't know if tried to is the right word. My, my uh, brother-in-law is really into DC Comics. Oh, no, no, don't do that. That's one of those things we're not editing out this time, folks. Oh, shoot. Okay. (laughs) Um, Anyways, my brother-in-law is really into DC Comics. And uh, so he was super excited. And I think I I would say Superman by far is his favorite, too. Uh, He likes Batman a lot, but Superman... um, and, And Maybe it's just that Batman's had three movies since the last time we saw Superman, pretty much. Although I guess uh, Dar- or Batman Begins came out right before Superman yeah, Returns, before. huh? Oh, was it a whole year before? Yeah, they were going to do every three years you would get one. It was going to be Superman one year and Batman one year and Wonder Woman one year. And Joss Whedon's Wonder Woman was supposed to be the next summer after Ma- uh, Superman Returns. And that, you know, of course fell apart, but... Uh, that would have been really neat to that have would. one every year and just like, okay, and it they would did, be easy to remember. They probably didn't have to do Wonder Woman every year if they didn't feel, yeah, they believe it, they could have done Green Lantern and then Flash and then go back to Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Flash, mm-hmm. and you have them rotate or whatever. They uh, may do that now. I mean, now that they've, 
ca- raked in the cash. I was going to say, seen how well Marvel has done, but uh, yeah, either way, <laughs> either one. Can well, be they there. did with. I mean, obviously, Batman has been raking in the cash for years, um, and uh, it's obviously early to say how well Superman's going to do. Um, I think it's fair to say that it's a hit movie, though. But yeah, you could probably say that. I mean, they're, I'm, I, I'd be willing to bet that they'll announce that they're doing the sequel within days before you even know how well the movie's really going to do. Because it opened with, what, $113 million? Is that what it was? Well, I thought it was 125 but yeah, okay. there was that Walmart Thursday screening that made $12 million, so that would make 113 for the weekend. Right? Right. Correct my math. because I don't know. I, I just know that it was well over 100 and they said it was the biggest opening for June, which, of course, is going to last until next year when... Uh, when anything when, comes out. Yeah. When Annie, starring uh, Willow Smith, comes out. Oh, wait, that's not that doesn't no, exist anymore, a, huh? I can't even remember Who's her name. Girl? It's Visa the Southern Wild Girl. Oh. I, I used to know the name. Uh, it starts with a Q. It's it's hard, really yeah. hard name. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway. Yeah, it's good. That's, that one's going to be her and and Jamie Foxx. And now they're saying Sandra Bullock's going to be, what's her name? Miss... Cadigan? Miss Hannigan? Hannigan, there you go. Oh, Sandra Bullock and, is Miss Hannigan. see, I thought it was going to be like all an, a whiz kind of version. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it would be oh, like okay. Queen Latifah as saying. Miss Hannigan or something like that. But I mean, that's interesting to have Sandra Bullock as, as Miss... Yeah, Miss Hannigan, yeah. Carol Burnett played the Hannigan one in the 1983 yeah. one, 82 one. She did a really good job of that. It's It's going to be fairly hard especially for I mean Sandra Bullock is good but uh, I wouldn't call her a comedian she's an actress more than a comedian And oh is it a comic role yeah Mrs. Hannigan is, is really wacky or she's like drunk half the time on you know the, the bathtub gin or whatever that she's making and she's just really crappy uh, yet kind of strict and awful oh is she runs the orphanage she runs the orphanage right I wonder if they'll have that rooster guy and and whoever Bernadette Peters played whatever I don't know even remember what her name was. I wonder if they'll have all that crap. I, see, I don't know Annie. I I, I didn't have sisters. Ah, uh, see, I so did. I, and I saw never a lot. Saw Annie. But it's it can, maybe we can all agree that it's better to talk about Annie <laughs> than to talk about men. Yeah, because yeah, I have us, a feeling it's going to be very polarizing. Steering us back on uh, topic. Uh, yeah, my brother-in-law. Super into DC, super, super into Superman. Um, that wasn't too many supers, was it? It was three too many. Oh, we're gonna have to edit that out. Oh no, that's not available. So if there were less than nine, you know that we've edited something. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, he yeah, he loves Superman, and so you know he. <laughs> the funny thing was, you know, I guess when you really love something, you. Ex- just assume everyone else loves it or something like that but okay he was all he, he called me up and he's like yeah the walmart's doing that you know the pre view show whatever you want to call it and uh, they're starting to sell tickets at nine o'clock on saturday morning on this day and normally my brother-in-law he was the one that was doing the half marathon with me so normally on saturday mornings we get together and go for a run and he's like yeah you want to just meet me at the walmart and we'll get the tickets and then we'll go for a run afterwards um, but then I found out what time this showing was going to be, and it was going to be at 7 o'clock, and I get off work at 6.30, mm. very far away from where the theater was going to be. So I was not confident in my ability to make it to that screening, so I decided that I wasn't going to go with him to it. But he uh, he, <laughs> he got up early. He was there at like 7 so that he could be in line <laughs> To get these and there was a line tickets. at seven. No, there was no line. Oh, okay. He just, you know, loved Superman so much. He just assumed everybody else would, and so, yeah, he's like, oh yeah, there's no line here. I wasted. I got up early for nothing. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, he was. He's yeah, really excited about it. I'll bring him up again later. Um, but yeah, I almost I could have gone to that early screening considered doing it i thought it was for a midnight show or something like that though i didn't realize it was for a seven o'clock show that i wouldn't be able to get to is your brother-in-law older or younger than you he's uh younger a little bit younger because i was going to say that the whole getting up early for tickets for a concert or a movie or whatever seems like a young man's game right camping out 
And the whole midnight show thing, I think I'm, I'm convinced, is a young man's game now. In fact, let me sum up my feelings for Man of Steel with this story. Uh, I went on a trip with my friend Jeff uh, two weeks ago, and he went in the bathroom, and, and on the TV there was a, a, you know, top songs in the country, the Billboard Top Ten kind of thing, and when he came out, I handed him a gun and said, dude, the number one song in the nation is by a guy named Macklemore. <laughs> and Jeff said, oh, I know Macklemore. He's really cool. So I took the gun back <laughs> put it in and your put own it in mouth. my mouth. That is my experience of Man of Steel, folks. If you were, if you don't want to hear that, you can turn it off now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's it's interesting. Um, so, I went and saw Man of Steel the day it opened. You saw it twelve o one a.m. the day it opened. I saw it at three in the afternoon. Um. So my uh, the funny thing was though I had to work the morning show that day. So yeah. I was probably at least as tired as you were <laughs> the day that you saw it at midnight. Uh, I yeah, know I that figured you'd have to have it even worse than me. Yeah, very, very. Uh, it got to be really difficult uh, at certain points during the the movie to stay awake. I was just like, "Whoa, it's really starting to hit me." And I've been sitting here for a long time. How long was the movie? Do you know? I think it was like two hours and twenty one minutes or something like that. But I don't know. I, I'm, why am I putting my hands up for for the listeners to say, "Oh, hey, I'm, I'm trying to assure the listeners I don't know if I got that wrong." Yeah, that's a part we would have edited out, folks. Definitely Unfortunately, have. you're stuck with Every it. Every time I do something that doesn't work in a podcast, <laughs> we should edit it out. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, this sums up my feelings for for Man of Steel. The face I'm making right now. Oh, perfect. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so. Now we've 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 talked about. You want to but tell us the, your experience film, of seeing it in the middle of the night, or do you want to talk the film itself? No, well, just the experience. I think is, it has to set the stage. I, it was one of the worst film experiences I've had. I'm not going to say the worst, but I just I I don't know what happened. I was exhausted, either by the movie. If you didn't have the same experience, it wasn't by the movie. It was just that I was actually exhausted. And I could not stay awake. And I would doze off for maybe a second, maybe a minute. I don't know how long. And then I'd open my eyes again, and they'd still be fighting. <laughs> and then I'd be like, oh, okay, okay, uh-oh. And I'd fall asleep again, and I'd open my eyes. And I don't know how much time had passed, but they were still fighting. Hours. Um, and so the movie <laughs> ended, and I was just numb and unhappy and and just... It's like wow, wow! I am an old fart. That I what? Oh, that sucks. And I had to ask my cousin what happened in the movie. And the weird thing is, when he would tell me, I'd say, "Oh yeah, I saw that." And don't hit the table, by the way. It makes a weird like noise. Like I said, what happened to Feora? Who killed Feora or whatever? And he says, "Oh, she didn't die." And I was like, "Really?" And then he said, "This happened and this happened," and I was able to remember the lines. For that, and I was like, "Oh, they said that you know this is a good death kind of thing. This would be." And he goes, "Yeah." I'm like, "Oh shoot, I saw that, <laughs> but I had no memory of seeing it." <laughs> and there were two or three things at the end that he explained to me, and he's like, "Oh, well, yeah." And, and Lois and Superman have this this kiss, and I was like, "Really? Was it really awkward kiss?" And he goes, "Yeah." I was like, "I saw that too." So, and that has never happened before. I that <laughs> where. I, I was asleep, but I must not have been asleep because I remember. Not completely asleep. Yeah, that's weird. Sometimes I'll do that where I'll throw uh, like a podcast on my iPod and, and lay down and fall asleep to it at night. And then in the morning when I try and figure out where it was that I f left off, where I don't, you know, I'll just keep s skipping through and be like, no, I haven't heard this part. And then I'll listen for a while. I'm like, oh, no, I, I did hear this. And so I'll skip forward a little further. I'm like, oh, okay, here, I definitely haven't heard this stuff. And then a minute later, wait. Wait, I no, I did hear this. Because you're like in and out, you know. You, I get that a lot, uh, especially at times when I've done the morning show and I'm, I'm really, really tired. Luckily, I didn't fall asleep watching this film. But there was a few times where I was just like, whoa, whoa. It's getting it's getting tough to fight this, um, but yeah. Uh, so we've got your experience, sort of my experience. Um, now we can talk about the film itself, I suppose. Um, okay. And now I I didn't like it at all. 
mostly because it made me feel really, really old. Like I said, the whole Macklemore thing. Obviously, my Superman loving days are over. The Superman that I loved was played by Christopher Reeve, and there was a filmmaking aesthetic, even in the bad ones, that is no longer in vogue with young people, and the studios no longer care what somebody like me thinks or feels about a movie. I, that's what I felt. I, I felt like it was made for people who are younger than me, and this is not your father's Star Trek. Um, and <laughs> and it's just... Uh, there were different goals, different agendas that they were trying to put forward than the old Superman, than the Chris Reeves Superman and the Brandon Routh one, which was really trying hard to, to be like link in Reeve. with those Christopher Reeve ones. Um, that There was just a, a, an aesthetic, something they were trying to put forward that these filmmakers were like, no, that was good in those days, but that's not that doesn't fly anymore. Clearly it doesn't fly anymore because Superman Returns, people disliked. That was the impression I got from the movie. If you liked the Transformers flicks, then come on over and see our new Superman <laughs> movie. You are our brothers. Yeah, it really did seem to have a lot in common with the Transformers. Um, I have to admit that I didn't really like it much either. Oh my gosh, really? Um, which made me kind of sad because I like Superman a lot. Yeah, I love Superman. And I wanted it to be cool. Um, but yeah, it just seemed a lot more like that. I mean, like you're saying, you know, they're, they're, fi they're still fighting, whatever, you know, uh, the thing that really probably got on my nerves the most, the, the time, the, the, so Batman, you have come back to die with your city moment <laughs> of this movie for me was like the 15th time that Superman or Zod got thrown through a building and came out the other side and then flew over and then threw the other one through a building and came out the other side. Um, See, I only saw a third of those. <laughs> and I was just like, wow, that keeps happening. Yeah, they did a ton of that. Um, and it just... It, and it really did have that kind of Transformers... Uh, feel to it you know the giant ship eats through a building and then the building topples or something there was like 15 building toppling scenes uh in in the fight scenes and okay, it was just hey, like why let me interrupt and ask since and i may have to do this through the whole thing <laughs> was there a Everybody get out of Krypton. Uh, Krypton. Everybody get out of Metropolis. There's going to be a big battle. Please, everyone run to safety. Kind of warning before this battle happened. Because there was nobody except for the Daily Planet employees who were getting hurt <laughs> in this battle. You know what I mean? There wasn't when one of those. When you take down an entire building, there should be massive yeah, casualties. But all of, of the people. buildings seem to be empty. And... Was there some kind of warning to get out of the buildings? Or did they just show the buildings empty so it wouldn't traumatize people? Yeah, it was probably something like that. They didn't ever, on the movie, as far as I know, they never had any kind of get out of Metropolis. And that was the thing that I was irritated with. I was watching this and I'm just like, what kind of a stupid, crappy Superman is this? He's just going to keep fighting with Zod right in the middle of New York City? Oh, I mean Metropolis? Um... Because he just kept going. And it's like, dude, if this was the real Superman, he would have done something to lure Zod away from the city so that millions of people would not be killed in this stupid little battle. I mean, first of all, the way they did this story, Superman wasn't Superman before Zod came. He was still in hiding, didn't want anybody to know that there was a Superman out there guy so people didn't love him they weren't going to be like oh thanks for saving us superman it's a good thing that you saved us um did, uh, wait, sure thousands of people name? died uh, when did she say superman was that at the very end before the kiss no it was somewhere earlier on when like the government was had brought him in the part where he came in with the handcuffs and okay and then Lois is talking to him in the room and all the guys are listening next door and she starts to say Superman and he does something to I do remember that. interrupt her or something, which 
I'm not sure I got that. If that was supposed to be a joke. I think it was. That, oh, no, don't say Superman. Or why not say Superman? Why is that? What's the purpose behind that? I think it's similar to in Superman Returns. He says, you know, he's here for truth, justice, you know, all the rest or whatever. <laughs> truth, justice, and uh, the, the rest. You know, they left out the American way just so people would say, oh, they didn't say American way. More so than a political agenda, they just left it off so people would go, hey, they didn't say it. Yeah, kind of like the uh, throwaway. The, I always think of the line where uh, on the first G.I. Joe movie where they're like, oh, yeah, now we know who this bad guy was. <laughs> and then the general comes in. He says, and knowing is half the battle. <laughs> and Did that get a laugh? Oh yeah. Well, I don't. I wasn't in a theater, but it got a laugh out oh, of me. I okay. I laughed out loud at that because I remember you telling me that. You know, I was somebody who watched those shows, and so that was specifically for me, kind of a thing. Okay, so you were saying he wasn't Superman until well, yeah, the end of the movie. He was and not so Superman. He was as alien and uh, wrong to it seems like to anybody as Zod was. There Did was a guy that showed up and said, "Give me Superman," and then. They're like, who the hell is Superman? And then Superman shows up and fights him. And then for some reason, everyone's like, yay for Superman. We like you. So he didn't, I don't want to say come out of the closet. He didn't promet, pr promote himself as being, you know, a protector of our world until Zod had done that thing where it took over all the TVs and it was in all the different languages, which, by the way, I thought was really cool and scary. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, he was completely unknown. He okay. would go around looking like a hobo and like saving people okay that part from oil it. rigs and stuff like that he didn't dress up in his outfit i guess he found out about the ship um right before zod showed up and like zod found him because he found out about the ship and that was is that what happened yeah that's what they said like when he went down into the ship then that like it triggered it triggered something so they could find him okay um, and yeah, let, let me uh, amend my comment. I, I didn't hate everything about the movie. There are a couple of things. In fact, I'd like to mention a couple of things I did like. But unfortunately, when I say it, it's going to be with a grain of salt. For example, all of the Smallville flashbacks I liked. Uh -huh. Like the stuff with it, the, the one in particular I liked was when his super hearing kicked in when he was in elementary school. Right. And he hid in the closet and all the other kids are saying, you're a freak and just awful 21st century <laughs> shitty kid behavior. Um, and and Ma Kent has to come and and say, you know, just focus on my voice or whatever. That was in one of the trailers. Right. And it worked really well. It was a, a human moment in a film that I didn't think was jam-packed with human moments. Uh-huh. Unfortunately... We got these flashbacks at like inopportune moments throughout the film, almost as though there, somebody like Christopher Nolan had something to do with this movie. <laughs> you know, someone who's incapable of telling a film from start to finish. Someone who tells a film from finish to start instead, uh, you mean? Yeah, so like, like, so like the guy who made Memento, whoever that guy was, it felt like he had something to do with this movie. And... I, again, you know, I, I, I hold the 1978 Superman pretty much sacrosanct. I think it is the best superhero film ever made. And it just starts with Krypton and goes through to the end in a linear fashion. And I think I would have responded better in a linear fashion. Every yeah. time it jumped back, sometimes I didn't know. And now granted, I was tired. But sometimes I didn't know it had jumped back. Once Henry Cavill was playing, Super, was playing Clark, I was just like, so wait, I thought he was somewhere else. And now he's at home again. Wait, his his old man. Oh, okay, so he didn't die. They made me think Pa Kent had died, but he didn't die. Oh, this is a flashback. <laughs> yeah, I think that was the first flashback where he was playing Superman. But yeah, I, I have to agree with you. I, I've become less and less a fan of flashbacks as time goes by. There was a time that I would, you know, use them in stories and stuff like that frequently, and I thought that was a, a worthwhile... But it's become such a thing to where you never, and maybe it's writers, you know, they've, they've talked about the whole epic storytelling where you have to start in medias res, which is that in the middle of the action or something like that. I can't remember exactly what that translates to, but 
That it's, sounds right. You got to start in the middle of the action. Um, and they did that a bunch of times. Like, start in the middle of the action. They started in the middle of the action on Krypton. And then he left Krypton. And then they started right in the middle of the action on... Uh, in Canada or Alaska. Yeah, where, where he was fishing, I think. He was on the fishing boat. Wasn't that right in the middle of that one? Okay. I can't remember. But, yeah, they just kept going to action crazy go 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 um super robot monkey team power <laughs> I uh, heard that and they I used did. to do that on alias did you watch alias and you know what i don't think i had ever seen it before alias the episode would start and sydney would be getting the crap kicked out of her or she'd be tortured or or oh, somebody just found her out and they pointed a gun at her and then it would say 30 hours earlier and right. I was just like wow what a clever thing and you'd watch the rest of the episode and at the end of the episode you'd get back to the teaser and I'd be like wow that's cool but the third or fourth time they did it on Alias I said oh you guys please don't do that anymore and then they did it every time it, it, I guess it, it's, obviously we know that Sydney's never going to get killed and all that stuff but it's just when you show the end of something there becomes an inevitability of things have to go the, the dominoes all have to fall to get her to this point yeah. sooner or later she's going to put on that the, dang blue wig because you saw her wearing the blue wig at the end <laughs> yeah I mean the only way that that can work is if you pretend to kill Sydney in the teaser or something you know something disastrous happens where you're just like oh no don't let this out don't go don't go don't put on that blue wig oh no you die in that blue wig you know what I mean I saw the blood stains on the blue wig right? at the flashback exactly. at the start but I just flash forward for me every time they flashed back to his childhood or the you know the the, the bus accident or the, the tornado I guess it was oh my gosh I hated the tornado scene so much yeah did did Pa Kent really sacrifice himself for a dog to <laughs> to teach Clark a lesson. I don't get it. Like when Clark's like, hey, no, let me go. And Pa Kent already knows that he's Superman. He knows that he could handle it. He knows that he could go out and do stuff. And then he could just get up in a cornfield somewhere and just be like, oh, my gosh, I'm alive. And everybody would think, wow, that's great. Yeah, I don't know. There was a lot of things. Like I want uh, another thing I was going to complain about. Um, and, yeah, don't touch. I'm trying not to. Um... I don't know if now's the time to complain about it or if we need to stick with what we're at, but Lois Lane, I know that it's the uh, 21st century and Lois Lane can't just be a damsel in distress anymore. She has to be, and she her character always has been intrepid reporter. She'll do stupid things to get that story because that's what she is. She's the intrepid reporter and that was a lot of the times why Clark would, or Clark, why Superman, Clark didn't really do much, he was Clark. He just went, gosh, Lois, sure good thing Superman was around. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that was why Superman would have to go and save her all the times because she would do crazy things to try and get the story and then all of a sudden she's in trouble. She cared about the story more than her own safety. Right. Which which is admirable. I liked that. I like that about her character. But that wasn't what they did with this. She did have intrepidness. I mean, she went to that freaking military base at the beginning, in the middle of the friggin' Alaska or wherever. No, it was Canada somewhere on Canada's Canadian soil. That's why I'm here a day early. Screw you. Um, <laughs> which uh, that was cool. I liked that for her. Um, but then later. Uh, they show up to take Superman away, Zod and all his folks in their ship. They're going to take Superman away. They come down and Lois goes back and gets behind the barrier with the military guys. And uh, Ursa comes over. Feora, I think, is what they oh. called her in this one. Whatever. Okay. Her name is Ursa. And she comes over and says, Oh, we also want this female to come with us. And there was no effing reason ever. They say, Oh, Zod says bring her with with us. Zod doesn't even freaking wreck. He doesn't even look at her. He doesn't say anything to her. He doesn't talk to her. She's not. There was no reason for her to be there other than 
we needed somebody else on the ship that can now save Clark because we'll bring back Jorel and he can show her how to do stuff. And it was just a crappy, poorly done plot device, well, which was A, to get Lois Lane still involved in the story because she's not just a damsel in distress and she can't be forgotten about for a large portion of the movie or something because, I don't know, maybe girls won't like the movie anymore if we Lois isn't really important. But we'll just have Henry Cavill take his shirt off again. Yeah, I mean, that seems like that would be plenty, don't you think? Well, how come they didn't just have her sneak on board the ship? Yeah. That sounds like a Lois Lane kind That's of thing. so much more like it. Uh, something like that. Maybe they couldn't figure out how to make it believable that she snuck on the ship. I don't know. But, yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was the worst part, I think, about that. It's just like, yeah, we're going to bring Lois. And Lois is on there. All she does is cause some trouble. They don't ever talk about her, mention her, recognize her, look at her. So there was no line about, you know, if he loves these Earth creatures so much, let us take his favorite, like in Superman 2. No. They, they didn't realize that he had feelings for Lois, and so they use her as a as a, a, a playing, as a, a, a pawn, or a, what are you called? A card? Uh, yeah, a card up their sleeve, like they didn't... Yeah, no, there was nothing was just that I there. noticed. Maybe there was, and I was just nodding off at that point or something I don't know but I just remember thinking that sucked and they kept doing stuff like that too like Daily Planet that building is right next to where the ship is blowing things up um, where, when they're having that end stuff you know the ship there and it's got the beam going down through the earth or whatever and coming up the other side and it's it went through the earth? I think that's what was going on. The other side ship that he went and blew up was like in New Zealand or something like that. Wow, I have no memory of that. <laughs> it was not well. But but put together, I, I remember a line where if we put our ship next to their ship, it will open the Phantom Zone again. Yeah. And I was just like, wow, my imagination sucks. My 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 subconscious. Because I, I, I was sure I dreamt that because I was like, well, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those kind of things. It's, yeah, I don't know. It, wait, wait, was there a Phantom Zone in this? Yeah. Yeah, that's where they got sent when they were bad. And then an explosion of Krypton released them from the Phantom Zone somehow. Oh, and they had been searching for 30 years. Right. For but yeah, it, w the Daily Planet was right there in the middle of it. And so... They had, like, the stupidest part where they're trying to run away. And was it was that really? I mean, you, uh, you joked, or maybe you didn't joke, or you talked about Jenny Olsen. Was that really I, Jenny Olsen, I didn't or was know it that. just Jenny? It wasn't me that said that. Somebody, I read somewhere that that was supposed to be Jimmy Olsen. It, her name, that she didn't have a last name. It was just Jenny, but that she was Jimmy she Olsen. And Jimmy I just Olsen. thought... I don't know whether I have a problem with that or not, but they should have maybe Done. mentioned that yeah. that's who that was if that was made it more obvious. Yeah, she she's nobody. She did not. She was sir not appearing in this film <laughs> until like a building fell on her, and then what's his face Perry Perry, Perry White White. Okay, I was like Morpheus, Perry yeah. Como Perry. I don't know. Uh, Perry White's all like, oh, I'm not leaving you, Jenny. And he stays there just so uh, we've got to give Perry White something to do because we've got Morpheus here playing this role and he can't just be an unimportant character. Huh, see, I didn't remember. I, was, I, I vaguely remember him pulling her. Oh, wait, he couldn't pull her out. He had to stand with her and die with her or something is what my memory is saying. Yeah, it was something like that. I can't remember exactly how it went. But, yeah, he was – they were trying to get in. She's like, don't leave me. And they're like, oh, we won't leave you. I don't – I won't leave you in turn that I don't care about because you haven't appeared in this film yet. Um, but yeah, there was just a lot of stuff like that where they had to make it happen there. It's, it's you know, the, the coincidence thing. You know, one too many coincidences uh, gets to be irritating, you know. Co it, the coincidence, what is it, the Pixar thing where a coincidence that... A, co a that, coincidence that gets, that makes more trouble for your hero is good. A coincidence that gets them out of trouble is bad. bad. Yeah, yeah. It was. It it got to be really frustrating. Where and and they weren't just coincident. They were just like, here we need this person to have something to do, kind of a thing. It's like they don't have anything to do. They're not. I mean, all they they need to just get out of the building and run away, 
but instead we're going to give him something unimportant to do. We're going to have him stick around trying to dig somebody out of the rubble because I don't know. It was it just I don't know. It just got on my nerves. There was just a lot of that. Um, well, I, I might besides the I mean there I have a list of things that I didn't like, but it's just this film when I saw that trailer where it says, oh, I am General Zod, and you have been... Wait, no, I'm giving him a better voice than he really has. <laughs> uh, and you've been harboring a, 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 an alien among you. He may look like you, but he's not one of you, you know, whatever. There was this trailer that hit just a month ago or something like that that showed, like, the Kryptonian supervillains just kicking the crap out of Superman and made it really grim and really violent, which is what Man of Steel was. And I was just like, wait a minute, this is like Superman 5. Or this is, you know, at least the third one, when you finally bring in like a whole army of bad guys he can't possibly defeat. You don't do that in the first movie. And we talk about that with each sequel of a movie, they have to go bigger and more threat and more danger and more special effects and all that. And But when you're starting over, maybe you can start a little bit small so you leave yourself a way to go and with this one yeah there was just so much stuff that they had to take care of because they wanted to do the origin and they you know they wanted to do the krypton stuff they could have done a whole movie with that krypton stuff they they had so much new information about the nobody on krypton has children naturally they and they only have babies when there's a need for a new scientist or a new supermodel or something and 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 that child is harvested by underwater robots in little <laughs> bubbles and all that stuff and nobody ever actually has sex anymore uh, to have children and it's it you know everybody has a, a a genetic disposition toward their calling in life about what they're going to be and Zod I remember mentioning again and again that he's a soldier and that he's that was what he was created to do that's all he knows because that is his destiny. That is his. That's the meaning in his life is to be a soldier. And then Clark's response is, "You're a monster, Zod." I, again, I thought I had imagined that because it was such a bad response. <laughs> there was um, another one that was really similar to that. I came back to stop you. Uh, he said something like, "Blah blah." I'm going to stop you uh, in there, and I was like, "It wasn't quite as bad as the Batman one, but." Yeah. Uh, but anyhow, all of that stuff was jammed into this movie. And yeah, we have to give Perry White something to do. We have to give Lois a lot to do. Ma and Pa Kent, they even killed Pa Kent. You know, they had to give him a, a heroic death. and a semi-heroic death. And, you know, <laughs> just the, the, uh, the all sorts of stuff. And then, you know, hours of repetitive fighting. Uh, but it just, I, I, I think they failed this movie with way too much stuff if we had met Perry and all those guys in an earlier film then all of the there would be emotion attached to every one of these characters like there was like Guy Lombard and stuff in there that I didn't realize till the end of the movie that that's who that's supposed to be or and he he was a guy from the old comics that worked at the Daily Planet that would always pick on Clark and it was that really balding actor that right. we see in a lot of movies and they had Lana and Pete Ross and Whitney uh, Fordham, who was the bully that picked on Clark in Smallville days and all that. I mean, all these characters that are actually from the comic. J Jack Sur, who was the evil scientist on Krypton, who was most responsible for his destruction or whatever, was the really, really thin-faced Kryptonian guy that was on the council, you know, at the beginning and somehow ended up in on the ship with Zod. You know what I'm talking about? Really, really skeletal, scarecrow-looking guy. And, uh, you know, that sort of stuff was really interesting to me that they they cared enough to put in all these characters from the comics, uh, but n none of them got enough development to mean anything because it, it was basically Superman 1 and Superman 2 combined into one movie. Yeah. Yeah, they they that was like I was you know complaining that Superman wasn't Superman yet uh, when all this happened. Superman needed to be Superman already, 
he didn't he couldn't be just some dude that came out of nowhere because people would hate him and he they destroyed half of New York City I'm sorry Metropolis um they just destroyed it it was leveled it was like a crater I mean you see it at the end and there's this giant crater there was a crater in, in it Metropolis? was basically a crater and like Daily Planet was right on the edge of it but, yeah, there was just this huge crater that they were all standing around and then, like, Clark and Lois kissed in the middle. Yay, we saved the, the city. Oh, we also leveled half of it and killed thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people in the process. Everybody will be fine with that. They're not going to hate you as much as they hate the freaking terrorists that crashed the planes into the, the Twin Towers. You know? The <laughs> well, that's definitely a... Not an agenda, but that's an attitude that they decided to proceed with in this film is instead of seeing him as a god and as a, you know, a role model and as, oh, thank you, Superman. Oh, gosh, Superman, help us. We would see him as an enemy, that we would be jealous and afraid of somebody that's that much more powerful than us. And you know what? I think there's probably room for both. In reality, yeah. if somebody came forth, half of us would be like, oh, geez, that guy is awesome. I'm tearing down my picture of Ralph Macchio in my locker and putting this guy up. What? And the other half is just like, oh, F that guy. He would kill us all. You know what? This guy, uh, you know, I, I, I don't trust a word that guy says. I mean, how do you how do you empathize with something that's a lower life form than you? It's like this guy could just incinerate us depending on his whim. And... Anyhow, I, I I guess Lois saw the good in him. The, the at the end, Harry Lennox, the the black military leader, he he had learned to trust Superman and like you know shake his hand and all that stuff, right? Sort of, but not really. And the, there was the a, like very a, a end, female officer that said he's yeah, hot. I thought he was hot. The very end, uh, he like come. They're driving along or whatever, and Superman throws his drone the spy drone plane down oh okay he says you're trying to find out where i hang my cape just gonna have to give it up because you're not gonna find out and uh so obviously they haven't learned really to trust him they're still trying to find out where he is okay i misremembered that then i did remember that she said that he was hot yeah um but yeah i don't know the, the thing that really bugged me the most was just that that whole you know the, let's destroy New York City again in another movie. Like, how... I, I, I want to draw a line in the sand and just say, okay, if I find out that there's another movie where they destroy a city just for the hell of it, I'm just not going to see that movie. I'm sorry. I'm done watching the cities be destroyed on a whim. And I was complaining about that to you using, you know, one of them's a recent example, one of them's much older. Uh, in G.I. Joe that I saw not too long ago. The we never the did second a, G.I. Joe. Yeah, the second. We never did a, any kind of a, anything about that G.I. Joe movie. Did I didn't we? see it. I haven't seen either of yeah, them. Yeah, I suppose we'll never do that then. It's just, I saw if a movie you want to talk about and, them and we didn't I can do just a, lay that here. gets my goat about it. That, that doesn't happen. You saw Amazing Spider-Man nine months after the yeah. fact and we didn't talk about that yeah see there you go but anyways in that G.I. Joe movie uh, Cobra has this awful weapon and so to demonstrate that they have this weapon they blow up all of London yeah we'll just blow up London no big whoop and then they just go on with the story like London I don't know exactly how big it is but it's more than 10 million people live in London and they just destroyed it with a super weapon and then oh yeah now we're gonna just move on yeah I was telling you and... about Olympus Has Fallen and just the casualties in that and I, I, we were having a conversation what was the old movie was it uh, were we talking about anything Roland Emmerich does where they have just yeah. well the one the other one that I mentioned that was the older example was uh, Armageddon where it's just like oh yeah here's a shard of the asteroid and it's just gonna destroy Paris let's watch it destroy Paris for a while Okay, let's move on with the movie now. Why did we destroy Paris? Why do we have to do this all the time? Is it just the Independence Day syndrome? You have to blow, you have to have mass casualties for people to find it worthwhile. And yeah, I mean, Superman, if Superman was Superman, he wouldn't keep fighting in Metropolis. He would somehow lure Zod out to sea 
Yeah, or, if they can fly, why even be in a place where there's any human beings yeah, at all? Off to you the desert. You could be up in the sky or you could be over the, the ocean. Yeah, all those things would have been just fine. And then you wouldn't have to have hundreds of thousands of people getting killed every time you take down another building. Now, script-wise, you had to be in a populated area so that Zod could go on his little rampage at the end and, and force Superman to kill him. Right? But that I could... I mean, right? Is that not the whole purpose of being in a populated area, story-wise? Because that was what Zod was going to do to make Superman. Now, had Superman vowed not to kill no, at this point? No, not no one. Had, he'd never said anything or there's the scene said, "Ours a line I just won't cross." There's the or flashback any of that crap. scene where I, I think that was Whitney was picking on him, and and he didn't fight back in any way. And you see that he squeezed the the, the metal mm-hmm. thing, and and I just again. Why did pa, didn't Pa Kent just smack the hell out of that kid? <laughs> if somebody was doing that to your boy, whether he's from another planet or not, yeah, I don't know. Um, that see, I didn't see it as that. Like that scene is him knowing that he can't show his powers to humans. Again, it's just uh, that same thing over and over again. Don't show your powers to humans because then they'll be afraid of you. So he kept not doing that, even though he was provoked to show them again and again. Um. That's what that came across. Not he's not going to kill this guy, because yeah, there's never anything about that and why he killed him and why it was a struggle. Well, obviously, he was going to kill him. You can't have Zod on Earth trying to destroy everybody and trying to subjugate it, and you know somehow he didn't get sucked back into the Phantom Zone with everybody else. So now he had some kind of plan, some kind of weapon that would annihilate all of us and re. Grow Krypton? Is that correct? I think it was basically they were going to terraform, which is not quite the right word because terraform means making it like Earth because that's what Terra is. But cryptoform. They were going to cryptoform Earth so that, you know, like they had their little breathers and stuff like that where they needed to breathe Krypton air. That was interesting to me. And they were going to change it so that the whole planet was like Krypton so they could, you know, live there and. Of course, that would, like, kill people, I guess. But, um, I don't know. I think that was the plan. Did they, and and did that, because they had an arc type thing, right? That had species from Krypton and it had the Fidae? Yeah. Right? Am I wrong? It had, like, the Kryptonian fetuses in it? Yep, it was there. It was and there. that got destroyed? Yeah, I think when they threw the other ship into it and it went into the Phantom Zone, then it went away or I can't remember to tell you the truth there was a lot of things blowing up huh okay and yeah and I'm sorry I have to keep interrupting but I remember some things and then other things I keep thinking I made that up while I was asleep you know what I mean <laughs> yeah um but they destroyed a bunch of fetuses I su- in the I movie I suppose hold on a sec oh wow he's gonna take a phone call while we're recording hey can I call you back in a minute Okay, bye. Oh, he, he didn't. Yeah, that's how live we are, folks. Yeah, sorry, that would have been edited out too, but unfortunately, wasn't. You would have taken the call in a regular Yeah, situation. I probably would have. It would be like when the baby wakes up and starts crying. I'm just like, okay, you're going to have to sit here and wait for me, man. Um, but yeah, that uh, there was one other thing that I wanted to say. Now it slipped my mind. Oh, well, let me mention one little tiny thing again i know why they did it but i hated it they cast diane lane as pa, as ma kent as martha kent she's so much younger than the part that they had her play so they put gray hair on her and digitally aged her oh, yeah. to be an old woman and every time she was on the screen i was just like oh my gosh what has happened to diane lane Oh, oh no, she's been burned or something. There's a <laughs> some deformation thing is happening, and then they would flash back, and I'd be like, "Oh, oh, they've got her old aged up in the present, but they leave her her regular age in the flashbacks." That bugged me so so much because it's just like, why, why would you do that? And and I think I don't know for sure, but I think the answer is so they can have her play Ma Kent for the next twenty years. And they didn't cast an old woman who might not be around 20 years from now. But I don't know. Yeah. 
Uh, they did age Kevin Costner a little bit, you know. In, in yeah, I was thinking well. that. And some of those, just like, man, he looks. Is he really that old now? That guy's wrinkled as heck. But if they're gonna kill the character as they did, you know, you could have cast somebody that's that's older. Yeah, the right age. Um, but I think that what they were trying to do was just show the progression of time and and have them be you know 35 or 40 or whatever I, I i don't know how old they were when they first just dis- no did we see them discover clark Is no it- <sighs> okay you just saw his spaceship kind of head towards earth and then he's on the boat then he's on fishing the boat. or whatever okay. with the beard and they made such a big deal about the beard and as far as i remember we never saw how he lost it right? no yeah you didn't you didn't get to see it um anyhow just the 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 idea of we'll spend $35,000 to make Diane Lane look old rather than cast an older woman is what I feel is totally wrong with the film industry and the whole idea. But at the same they time, spend I'm going to... $35,000 to make her young and all the flashbacks then if they... Well, but just put a wig on her or... or you know, it doesn't cost anything on. to put makeup on a, an older woman mm-hmm. and say, okay, you know, she's not got the glasses now. She's got... Like Phyllis Thaxter in the 1978 Superman was an old woman, but they put a black or brown wig on her in the scenes where they first find the baby so that she looks way younger than 65 or however old the actress was. And then as she gets older... They gave her regular white hair and all that stuff, and huh. it worked wonderfully. Anyhow, well, they don't do that anymore, though. They don't use makeup. Anymore. I know, they and, only and that's use CG. again, that's how I'm too old. <laughs> See, my dad used to say they never made a good movie after 1965. You know, he would say this all the time. There's no such thing as good movies anymore, and I'm starting to become that man. Where it's just like there's probably a line in the sand of when movies stopped being good. Now, granted, we had Avatar last uh, Avatar. We had Avengers last year. We had uh, Wreck It Ralph, and and you know, movies, good movies are still being made. But I'm finding myself to be more and more like my dad. The last movie he ever saw was Minority Report. I took him to see it on opening day, and he was so disgusted and un- upset with the way the movies. Oh, and that. That I was just like, okay, Dad, that's it. I'll never take you to a movie again. But I can see myself getting to a point where I'm just so disgusted with the way that movies are made. But that being said, the digital cape on the suit, I never knew it was digital. There yeah. were never a moment when I looked at that cape and it was like, oh, that's that's like Ryan Reynolds' mask. Stupid mask. It. Yeah. Always look, and I know that sometimes they actually had a cape, but I couldn't tell when they did and when they didn't. Yeah, and so in that case, their special effects worked wonderfully because that's what special effects are supposed to do. They're, they're, you're not supposed to be reminded that it's a special effect. You're just supposed to accept it as in the story that oh, okay, they're fighting a monster, or oh, okay, they're flying through space, or you know whatever it is. But the second you go, oh, you know that's made in a computer, that's really digital, or oh, oh geez, that's not really a guy making that leap. Then they failed. Yeah. And there were a lot of fighting scenes where I knew those weren't people because people move in a certain way. And granted, okay, Kryptonian people probably move in a better way than we do, but they were digital. I knew they weren't people. And the question has to be asked by a filmmaker, do we make this look like a cartoon or do we have to figure out a way to do it? which is going to be way more difficult with live action on wires or with puppets or with, you know, us shooting it in slow motion and then speeding it up or, you know, any of these things that they have to make the decision. Do we go the quick and easy route, which is CG, or do we find a way to make it so that it tricks the eye? And almost every time Superman and Zod were fighting, there were these two... Cartoons? I guess cartoons, but there were these two special effects that were duking it out. And it's so hard for me to feel anything for special effects because if for me to feel something, I have to subconsciously start to think this is real, that these are real people and that they could get hurt and I care about them. And, oh, don't, don't let Superman get killed and all that stuff. But every time, like a very bad line reading or a ba- very bad line in a script – or a very bad special effect, it pulls you out of that suspension of disbelief. Yeah. And you're like, oh, you know, I'm watching a movie. Yeah. 
And is that an old person's attitude, or is that just a living person's attitude? Um, it might be more of an old person's attitude, but I think it's mostly a living person's attitude. Um, I'm sure old people are more, you know, they're more world weary, world wise, whatever the right term for it is. So they will accept less uh, on, you know, just as is. Whereas, you know, kids, you can give them a crappy movie. I mean, there's tons of really crappy kids movies, and kids love them because, you know, they they don't, they're not as choosy. They might be really, really choosy with food, but they're not as choosy with entertainment. They'll they'll sit and watch all sorts of schlock. Well, we've all watched something that we loved as a kid and realized that it's crap now. Right. And we're just like, oh, but it's partly because our minds have expanded and we demand more, or it's partly because we didn't realize what bad acting was in those days or, or, uh-huh. or bad screenwriting or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. We hadn't seen 100,000 car chases Right. And been like, oh, you know, it's a car chase. I'm going to just mentally check out for a few minutes. Um, and I, 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 again, that's something that comes with being an, an older guy, I guess. But I just, I, I, I want, I want them to make Superman movies forever, the same as all these other characters that I like. I love Superman. I look to him as, you know, this ideal, this guy that's always going to do the right thing. That whole conversation that we had last summer where I just felt like that's not the right attitude for a Superman movie to bring this gray Batman-ness into it. And there are other people that feel like this was just really, really great. I mean, I've talked to people that are just like, no, you liked the Brandon Ralph peeping Tom Superman or whatever. And I was like, well, that's, I, yeah, I guess I did. Yeah, my my brother-in-law that I mentioned previously, he... Uh, Posted, I think, on Facebook or something like that, where he's just like, oh, I'm still on a high from having seen Superman yesterday. I want to go see it again right now, but I have to wait until 3 this afternoon or something like that. And uh, maybe it's partly that he just loves that character so much that he was just desperate for anything. Or maybe he really did think it was good and didn't, you know, maybe he knows all that crap that they kept throwing out, like the no babies ever born and... Uh, all the stuff that they were throwing at you and so it didn't seem like a lot was packed into him because he already knew it from before and so I don't know no all that was made up for this but uh, he liked it so some people did and and you know it, it's it's cool I guess if you like it I, yeah I, I mean I liked that G.I. Joe movie that I was talking about a, a minute ago um, most people didn't I think it was much less uh, liked even than the Superman movie was probably, um, but I still enjoyed it because I, I guess I just well, had okay, so much affinity for the characters that I didn't about really that care. For, for thirty seconds, how fun was GI Joe two? See, I just like I, I had a lot of fun with it. It was kind of like it's like Avengers or something like that, where you know you get the chance to see Thor fight Captain America, fight Iron Man. You know, kind of a thing. It's like, who who would win if Thor fought Captain America? Oh, yeah, well, you know that this... Oh, yeah, but he's got a shield and, oh, you know, that that kind of crap that comic book fans will debate endlessly. Um, it was the same kind of thing. You know, you got to see... Like, I was just all giggling and laughing. I'm probably not giggling. That might be a little too strong of a word for it. But I was just smiling and enjoying myself when... They went on to this endless ninja fight of Storm Shadow fighting uh, Snake Eyes and just all sorts of different stuff when I got to see Firefly come in for the first time wearing his little mask, which unfortunately he took off the second he got off his motorcycle and then he put it on like for one other minute during the movie, but the rest of the time he was just had no mask on. That was always one of those things that I loved about G.I. Joe guys is they all wore masks. I don't know what the deal was, but pretty much like 75% of the guys wore masks. Um, Okay, well, the point I was trying to make was I assumed that G.I. Joe 2 was fun. Yeah, I had a lot of good time. And Man of Steel was no fun. Yeah, I didn't find it to be either, unfortunately. Uh, Which, you know, isn't to say that Superman Returns was fun. It it wasn't. It was way more dour than the the, the first two Supermans. Well, I guess all four of the Supermans and all that. But I still, I just, I, 
I don't know. I think the attitude of the Superman character has a lot to do with it. You know, somebody that goes out there and enjoys saving lives and all that stuff and has people say, thanks, Superman, or whatever. is like, oh, that's a bad outfit and all that stuff. <laughs> that informs how you feel about all these things. Yeah, and, and he was hiding himself. He's vigilante Superman instead of Superman. The One of the few superheroes there are that goes around with his whole head open for everyone to see his face and his alter ego is the one that's in disguise instead of the one wearing the mask. Uh, yeah, that one other thing that I wanted to complain about. Uh, Henry Cavill is his name, right? Yeah. Good looking dude. Um, the, the, you could probably cut... Well, you could slice bananas on his cheekbones. Yeah, you might be able to. And his he had, like, the whitest freaking teeth in the world, too. He could do a, a Crest commercial. Well, yeah, no, uh, Tooth Decay can't get into uh, yeah, those Crestonian okay. choppers. I guess so. Um, but uh, terrible Clark Kent. He puts on his glasses at the very end. Just looks like Superman with glasses on. Does not look like Clark Kent. Like... When Christopher Reeve was Clark Kent, he did not look like Superman. He looked like a gangly, big well, he changed old fish. his posture. And yeah, he changed his posture. He wore like baggy. His mannerisms. Remember, how he, 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 Miss, Miss Kent, or Miss, Miss Yeah, Miss all Lane. that stuff. In the end of this movie, he's like, I'm going to go get a job at the Daily Planet. And he puts on his glasses and then he flashes that giant Superman smile again. And you're just like, dude. Not a single person would not recognize that guy. He looks at, he doesn't he didn't let his like hair hang down in his eyes or any of that kind of crap. Brandon Ralph was um a good Clark Kent. He was really convincing, you know. He looked kind of sloppy and you know, he had his hair hanging down and didn't look like the same guy that was in the suit, but Henry Cavill did not like he did not pull off Clark Kent at the end unfortunately when I saw that I was just like oh that sucks yeah I can't see you know some of those great scenes that you had in the first two Supermans where you know like Lois realizes that Superman is is Clark and she draws the glasses on the picture of him in the newspaper and then she tries to get him to that was actually an outtake wasn't it that was from the Richard Donner version yeah that got put back in 20 something yeah years. that scene was great where she's like I'm gonna jump out the window and she jumps out the window and he like does something so that she saved she saved she without appears to save herself. yeah without knowing that he was Superman and all this stuff and uh, th- see that's what I'm talking about that those stuff things is so fun those things couldn't happen with this Clark unfortunately because he's just not Clark my guess is that whoever made this film I don't know if it's we still no, recording? 30, oh, because it's an hour and 35 seconds. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if if it's uh, Zack Snyder, if it's uh, um, David Goyer, or if it's Christopher Nolan, but one of these people has heard the, oh, a pair of glasses and a hat would never convince anybody argument one time too many, and they took it to heart, and so they tossed out that whole Lois Lane can be tricked into you know Lois Lane is not is a great reporter but she can't tell that Clark Kent is Superman sort of thing and, and you know I realize that it's the 21st century and that people say that that's sexist or whatever but I don't care that's part of the fun of the character and to have her suspect that he's Superman and he goes out of his way to prove no no it couldn't have been Clark Kent because Clark Kent was right here or whatever is the fun of that it's not saying Lois is dumb or that women are dumb or that human beings are dumb. It's just kind of something that amuses us and, and keeps... It's a game that he plays and that the filmmakers or the storytellers play, keeping that ball in the air of he's got the secret identity. And yeah, maybe in real life you wouldn't buy the glasses and the, and the hat, but it's not real life. It's it's a fantasy and all that. And and here's one another thing, I, for ever since 2008, because nobody cared in 2005, people have complained about Christian Bale's Batman voice. That's never bothered me for a freaking second because they're making an attempt to have Batman sound unlike uh, Bruce Wayne, 
so he put he affects something with his voice when he's Batman, so that they can't recognize that as being Bruce yeah. Wayne's voice. All these people that and know him close their eyes and they're like, "Wait a minute, Bruce!" That's an ugly voice or whatever. You know what I mean? It's supposed yeah, scary to inspire voice. scariness and all that. It's never bothered me for a second. It's one of those things that we that I just accept because it's a superhero story or whatever, and it's like I like that they did something where they tried to address that. And in this, there's no addressing that. She knows that he's Clark Kent from the very second that he walks in. And maybe we can have fun in sequels with him trying to c- confuse Perry and 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 the other people, the other characters Jenny. that they introduce <laughs> and all that stuff. But like the the scene that I so loved in that Superman comic that I was telling you about where Lex Luthor is going to be executed and so he asks Clark Kent to come and interview him and he just constantly complains to Clint Kent about Superman and he says you're a better man you're worth 10 Supermans Kent because you're a human being <laughs> and he's like and you have to work to get the, you know he was born with all that stuff never realizing that he's talking to Superman that's not saying that Lex Luthor is an idiot it's just it's a mu- it's fun for us that it's just like that you would never assume that dumpy Unassuming, gangly, ga- you know, baggy nerdy, wearing hunched over, never do well, ambitiousless Clark Kent is this god, I'm a, and even the smartest man on the in the plan on the planet doesn't see it. I think that's delightful, man. Yeah. I love that, and I like that with Lois, and I, I I like that she would suspect, and it's like, oh, what was I thinking? Yeah, yeah, that no guy way. could never that be Superman. A, oh. I love that, and. You know, it's just, it's funny that something that I love so much can irritate people so, so much. And, you know, maybe there's somebody that's listening to this right now with little white fists <laughs> white in their knuckle. hands because the things that bother me didn't bother them at all. It's like, I love that they digitally aged Diane Lane. Okay. You know, and, and I'm not I, I'm not even going to complain about the suit. The suit was weird, but it didn't really bother me all that much. The score I felt was uninspired oh, and boring. Yeah, but it that was, didn't make that was me one thing I did want to complain about with this. You know what I actually did with this movie? Um, and unfortunately, I didn't think about it until too late. I've been meaning to do this for a long time where I'm going to, like, okay, I'm going to get the score to an upcoming movie like two weeks, whenever it is that they first release it, you know, two weeks before the movie even comes out. And I'm going to listen to it constantly. For that two weeks, so that when I go in to see the movie, I know all the songs beforehand. And so when the cool parts come up, be like, oh, here's that cool part. Oh, yeah. And it'll pump me up some more. And so I remembered that I wanted to do this. And so I downloaded the, the score to of, this movie. Of, yeah, to Man of Steel. Steel. Unfortunately, only like two days before the movie came out. And, yeah, I started listening to it. And I'm just like, huh. This is it? It's not anywhere near one of Hans Zimmer's best. And it's light years away from the awesome John Williams score. It's just mood music. Half the time it sounded like it could have been the the score to the TV show of Battlestar Galactica. Because that was a lot of dum 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 drum kind of stuff. And they did tons of that. Um, and just the, the endless thud, 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 thud kind of thing that Hans Zimmer just always does. Um, and it's almost become like the standard for all scores now. See, I don't think the, the score for Batman should be used for Superman. They're totally <laughs> different characters and feels. And the again, the attitude... I, and, and I guess I've been complaining about this for a year, yeah, but it just I, I I I if a Batman movie is dour and pessimistic and says that human beings are scum and that you know there's all, there's darkness within us all, I'm okay with that because that's a Batman. Yeah, that movie. is Batman. Superman is the opposite, and it's like you know what? There is the potential for greatness in all of us. Superman shows up, and all of us stand up a little straighter. And we say, I'm going to be better because he's better, because he's leading the way. And, and I want to be like that. That's and, and maybe that's an old-fashioned ideal, too. Maybe I'm showing my age that I actually dare to believe something like that. But it's just, I think if Superman showed up right now, that we would have a lot less murders. And we would have a lot less, you know, things like that. Partly, some of these, these criminals would be afraid of Superman catching them or whatever. But it's just... 
he comes and it shows us that there's more out there, that we're not just some isolated hole in the galaxy where life happened to spring up, but there's life everywhere and there's there's new horizons to pursue. I'll chase them anywhere. It's time to you know, there's time to spare. Uh, uh, you know, all that stuff. I, I, I realize I'm quoting the same damn thing that I said before, but it's just I, <laughs> that's what Superman says to me. And I know that everybody else has their different ideas and that there are people that actively hate Superman out there because he's the Boy Scout, because he's backward or because – not backward, but he's old-fashioned and all that stuff. But I think there's room for old-fashionedness. I, I, I dig that he represents – the best of us and even though he's not one of us he loves us he protects us we're important to him when we shouldn't be if you were a god you wouldn't give a crap about somebody that's calling for superman a hundred thousand miles at well probably not a hundred thousand miles yeah a hundred miles say, away on the moon yeah <laughs> but yeah it, but he does because he's better you know yeah it's cool and you should i like that there's that Side, there's that guy in the pantheon kind of a thing, you know, like DC has their array of characters, their various types of superheroes. Um, you have Batman, you have Superman, they're despite the fact that they team up a lot and have special Batman Superman comics, they're still, uh, you know, the opposite end of the spectrum. One's one way, one's the total other way, and you have the same kind of thing in Marvel. You know, you, t you talk about Captain America, and he's Marvel's Superman, you know, he's the guy that has that attitude that, you know, there's good in everyone and, uh, you know, stand up for the stars and stripes because they still mean something kind of a thing, you know, and everybody else is using the flag as a tablecloth now, but, you know, he would be upset if he saw someone using the flag as a tablecloth, that kind of stuff. Uh, it's neat to have the different kinds of characters and you, you have... You know, other characters that are, you know, you have Wolverine, who's probably the closest to Batman in uh, Marvel Universe, where the guy's just dour and angry and, you know, upset as at everything all the time kind of a guy. Um, it's cool to have the different things, and then when you put them all together, it makes for a really interesting Avengers movie or whatever. Uh... It's too bad that they've tried to make Superman more like that. Maybe they can fix things in future movies and make it more the way we hope. But, you know, one way or another, I hope that they still make more Superman movies. I suppose they will. Yeah, judging well, from the box office, we don't have to worry too much about there not being a Man of Steel 2. Um, there's another thing. Why did they call it Man of Steel? That's what... No good reason. That's what Brian Singer was going to call the sequel to Superman Returns. And but I think it's because of the Dark Knight. Instead of calling it Batman: colon, The Dark Knight, they called it The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight fits. And Man of Steel, they didn't even mention once. They never said anything. Like, wow, this guy's abs are as hard as steel. Watch when I punch him. Ow, it hurts. <laughs> Nothing. Oh, okay, never I never once. You mean. It's like Quantum it's, of Solace. Yeah, it's like Quantum of Solace. It's like it tangled. It's it's just oh, this is a good title, so let's just use that instead of Superman because for no reason. Just well, because. They want to set it apart from the old Superman Yeah, I suppose stuff. there's that too, but parents, if you're going to call it Man of Steel, then freaking mention it once. You know, it's... It, it, I hate that. It's Yeah, it's a good title because Superman's always been called the Man of Steel. But you can't just use it with no, you know, reason whatsoever. You got to... Give some nod of the cap to it at some point. Tip of the cap, nod of the head. Sorry, mixing my my uh, medications. Yes, <laughs> that too. <laughs> uh, th there will be a sequel, and people are saying that David Goyer, who wrote this, is going to write Justice League. At this point, I don't know that I want him to. Um, I, I I'm sure there'll be a Man of Steel too, and I'll probably go to it. But for right now, I, I, I'm fine to stay away from it. Zack Snyder, who directed this, directed Watchmen. I loved Watchmen. He directed 300. I was like, oh, F this. I'm not going to see a movie like that. I loved 300. Uh, I was like, oh, I'm not going to go see a remake of Dawn of the Dead. It was really good, too. You know what I mean? This guy's made these three movies that I liked. I know he's a good director. Like, uh, uh, I just, yeah, I... I, I 
I guess I've mentioned a couple of things that I liked, but they're so outweighed by the things that I didn't like. And the main thing is just the attitude of the film, the the direction that they chose to go. And well, you kind of expected that, I would think, though. I certainly having did. Having seen Watchmen and 300 and knowing that Christopher Nolan is the executive producer, because they were all kind of dark like right. that. Well, that's, that's a good point. But I even the... You know, Watchmen had a much smaller budget, and I don't remember being taken out of the movie again and again by bad special effects. Well, it was also a much smaller film, as it were. They didn't have to blast through buildings because they could all fly and lift up, you know, jump up, up. Hold on. Are you farting? No, I'm trying to think of how it goes. He's faster than a speeding bullet, Mm -hmm. more powerful than a locomotive can leap small small buildings and tall, tall buildings in a single house. <laughs> small building that's not very impressive <laughs> shoot the uh, plastic man can do that <laughs> he can <laughs> reach all the way over a tall building and without even taking his feet off the ground uh, <laughs> anyways um you know what's the lamest thing about dc Oh, maybe it's not the lamest thing but why do they have plastic man and elongated man in the same Thing. Why did they create both of those? Do they really need two stretchy guys? Uh, I have no idea. You'd have to ask your brother-in-law something <laughs> like that. What's the point of that? Uh, one's the goofy stretchy guy and the other one's the, the more serious, uh, serious stretchy. stretchy. I guess we needed, yeah, you need extra stretchy guys so you get both sides of the spectrum. And Justin stretchy there's guys. There's also an elastic girl too. Yeah. That, uh, Wait, that, that was incredible Incredibles. character... That was actually taken. It was a DC character called Alaska. Alaska really? That can stretch, yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. You'd think they would put up a fuss about that. Maybe she's so unknown that... She's really obscure, I guess. She wasn't even copyrighted. <laughs> Just like, yeah, we're not going to bother. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, I think... Uh, I, I think I, we're getting close to the time that we probably so ought to quit. I think We've been going for a while. And I heard in somebody else's podcast they didn't agree with what I said about – what we said about Iron Man 3. Um, I'm sure and, tons will say the same and, about this. And that's possible. But, you know, maybe I appreciate Iron Man 3 a little bit more a month later after seeing Man of Steel. I, I still don't like a lot of the choices that they made in Iron Man 3. Uh, but I felt like it was well made as a film. And I didn't really feel that way – on this one and, and that because I was combating fatigue it made it a more negative experience for me but it was negative enough I don't want to go back and watch it again hmm. and so I, I, I at the know, very least t- wait till the dollar movies uh, get it has that Jackie Robinson movie made it to dollars yet? It's at this theater, and it's been there for like three weeks, and I keep wanting to go to oh, it. Oh, the $3 one? Yeah. Oh. But no, it's not there. I, I, yeah, I'll tell you when, as soon as it's there. Yeah, we need go to go see, see that because I want to. But, I, yeah, I, you and I hardly get out to see movies together very often, and I don't know that we're obligated to talk about them all the time, but I like to talk about it, and I like to hear what other people noticed and what other people were bothered by and what other people thought were hilarious or funny. And or good, yeah. I mean, we it would be cool. I mean, that's if you don't agree with what we had to say, put it in the comments. Um, we'd like to uh, have a conversation about it. And uh, you know, we know that people won't agree with what we had to say. There's going to be several people, lots of people that don't agree, obviously, because there's. Well, I don't know. We don't have a whole lot of listeners, so maybe <laughs> we don't. But well, one other thing that was I found very strange is you know everybody is saying. This is a huge step up from Superman Returns. And yet, that one got a much higher score on Rotten Tomatoes than did Man of Steel. So there are a portion of, the, at least the critics, didn't like Man of Steel as much. And, and, and you know, maybe that's because critics tend to be older. I, I You know, I don't know. But uh, I, I didn't like it. And, and you never went and saw Star Trek Into Darkness. But that was one of those I prepa- I knew I wouldn't like, and I did like. I was surprised by how much I liked it. And there were a lot of people that were just like, oh, this movie sucked, and this is why, and they'd give me this and this and this. And I'd be like, well, none of those things bothered me. And so maybe there's somebody out there listening to this that feels the yeah. exact same way. It's like, well, I like the score. 
I liked the, co- uh, you know, whatever it might be. I, I, if you like the costume, that's cool. I mean, the, the cape did look cool. And, uh, you know, I thought... I like the snakeskin look to the costume. It was so slithery. <laughs> the the <laughs> stuff with Zod, uh, we didn't really talk about it, but, you know, it's like Terrence Stamp will always be General Zod to me, and so they ch- decided to go a totally different way. And I sure hated him. So it was kind of neat that they got that out of me. You know, they, they it was like, ooh, this is a really vile villain. Um, and it was clever the way that they didn't have him be in the Phantom Zone or any of that stuff. That it's like he's just been hunting for baby Kal-El all this time. Or maybe he wasn't a baby or another Kryptonian. I, I can't remember. No, no, he saw the, the rocket shoot up. So he knew that uh, rocket was out there. Yeah. And they'd been hunting for it for all these years. So, I, you know, that was an interesting take uh, on it than them just, you know, being in the Phantom Zone and becoming released from it. You know, they tried to not uh, retell anything that was – not do anything the way it was done in the Richard Donner ones, you know. And I guess that's admirable or, or maybe uh, maybe it's it's irritating. I don't know. But, you know, it's like that when we saw Amazing Spider-Man, anything that had been done in the Sam Raimi movie, it's like, well, we're going to do ours a little different. We're, we're not going to copy that exactly. And, and then the moments that they did copy it, just like, oh, well, that it worked way better in the Sam Raimi movie. <laughs> yeah, there's always that you could run into. So, All right. I think um, I'm going to call it and say it's time to end this episode. No, no, of course it is. And so, yeah, you know me. I could talk forever about it and I enjoy doing this and you know, and so hopefully somebody out there enjoys talking about these things and wants us to go see something else. I, I think we talked about that. Are there any movies out there this summer that you really want us to go check out? And uh, and and maybe Maybe I'm just too old to go see movies. Maybe I need to stop going to see movies. I'm still excited about... I think one of the, the main ones people have wanted us to see is Pacific Rim. I know you've said over and over, I don't want to see that. Maybe we need to do another Kickstarter campaign. Donate? It doesn't have to be $30 anymore. It can be less than that because we're not going to go to the D-Box again. We've, we've wasted our time as much as ever need be done at that. So donate $15 and we'll go to see Pacific Rim. <laughs> oh, one last thing. I saw Man of Steel in 2D. Did you see it? Yes, I saw it in 2D as well. Uh, And I walked out with a headache. (laughs) And I can't even imagine. I I might have died if I'd seen it in 3D. You'd walk out with blood coming out of your ears. And and my eyes, yeah. It just... Blood from every orifice you have on your face. Your nose, your eyes, your ears, and your mouth. And every pore on your scalp. (laughs) Um... (laughs) Yeah, uh, of but, course, we've yeah. said over and over again how much we don't like 3D, so I think it's probably well-traveled ground. Okay, yeah, I, I'm, I thought so, but it's not all movies give me a headache, you know, if they're loud or, or they're shot in a certain way and all this, but it just it has to say something that I was so miserable <laughs> in that movie. <laughs> and... Uh, Anyhow, hopefully the next one will be better, yeah, whatever hope, that might be. Hopefully uh, we'll see you again. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rich Outfield. And look up in the sky. It's a bird. It is a bird. It's a oh, bird. yeah, you're right. It is just a bird. Sorry. See ya. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons non-commercial 3.0 license. You've got to be kidding me.